Good morning. Welcome to all of you who have joined us here at St. Paul's and those who are joining us from wherever else you may be. Welcome to those who are joining us for the first time. Welcome back to those who have been away for a while. And of course, welcome to those who we see frequently. So glad you're joining us. We begin on page 355, your Red Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Almighty God, Father, we worship you and give The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls, or of lambs, or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more, bringing offerings in futile. Incense in a, is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation, I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of burying them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the, lot, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. May we read together Psalm 50 as found in your leaflet, and we will read it by verse. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Hear, O people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. Consider this well, you who forget God, lest I rend you and there be none to deliver you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that were not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received the power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, one person, and this one as good as dead, sorry, therefore from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action, and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, 
so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for for the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. The writer of Hebrews talks a lot about faith in today's reading. He talks about Abraham's faith, he tells us about those who died in faith. We as a people talk a lot about faith too. We say things like, according to our faith, or I lost my faith, or I found my faith, or I have faith, etc. But what is faith? According to the dictionary, faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Another definition is strong belief in God or the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. While I was at Gethsemane Lutheran in Manchester, we had a pastor who would teach his confirmation class that faith is believing in the promises of God. I always like that definition. These definitions equate faith with trust. They become synonymous. We can substitute trust for faith. It's not just God or religion that we have faith in. When we cross a bridge, we have faith or trust that it will not collapse. When we drive our car, we have faith or trust that when needed, the brakes will stop us. Think about being on an airplane. Some people who travel by plane are confident flyers. Others are not. But here's the thing. All you have to do is get on the plane. That's your only responsibility. Get on the plane and behave kindly to the people around you. You can be a relaxed passenger or a nervous passenger, but what really matters is the ability of the pilot. You can be utterly undaunted by turbulence, or you can hunker down and eat your little packet of pretzels like it's your last meal. But what matters is the training and experience of the pilot. The pilot is the same for the calm and reassured as well as the nervous and the fearful. We need to have faith in the pilot, in his or her training, in their ability to fly the plane safely. But know this, the confident passengers have a much better experience during the journey. It's the same with us in our Christian faith journey. We need to stick with Jesus to trust that by living with willing hearts, hearts open to the future God has prepared, like our forebearers in faith did, we too become inheritors of that future, 
a future better than anything we can ask for or imagine. It's Jesus' faith that makes the difference. Our faith in Jesus, our confidence in Jesus, lets us do things we couldn't do otherwise. What Jesus did for us, what Jesus does for us, in our sometimes tiny, mustard seed-sized faith that connects us to him, means we can hope, serve, and enjoy. Jesus can see the future we can, but we can look for, prepare for, and do our part for the future. Jesus made a future for us that we couldn't make for ourselves. Yes, we, we cannot see the future, but God in Jesus has made a future that awaits us, and it's that future that forms us and can inform us, inform our present if we let it. Yes, we cannot see the future, but in Jesus, God shows us a future in which Jesus is the first fruits, the first of those living fully in a resurrection life, a life marked by love and meaning and possibility and peace beyond death. Stick with Jesus and stick with the church. The church is a place where we practice and see faith, faith that relies on the promises of God and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, faith that stands on the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. We see that there is faith that reconciles marriage partners, even after infidelity. There is faith that rebuilds relationships, even after heartbreak. There is faith that endures and carries people through incredible physical suffering and pain. There is faith that allows people to give up addictions and ask for help. There is faith that makes people keep showing up to care for children others would leave behind. Faith that asks for forgiveness. Faith that reconciles. Faith that changes lives. Even a little bit of faith, even a little bit of openness, even a little bit of seeking and acknowledging God can lead to hope and joy and strength and peace and a future we cannot see, but of which we can be assured and confident. In our church, as well as others, we have those who have gone before us that we use as examples of faith, saints, if you will. As we hear and read the stories of God's dealing with God's people and their response, they shape our own response to God. They help us to understand what our being Christian in the world involves and what the truths are by which we must live. They provide a framework for all that we do. Today's passage from the letter to the Hebrews is from the 11th chapter, summing up the praises to our ancestors in the faith. The author writes feelingly at the beginning of the 12th chapter of the great cloud of witnesses by which we are surrounded. Certainly, the biblical heroes are part of this great cloud. And down through the centuries, there have been men and women of faith who have added to their number. And if they had not been in our own lives, in our own congregations, then whose example of faith would have been used by God to encourage us to strengthen our own faith? The Episcopal Church calendar commemorates the lives of some of these witnesses. This month, two of those whom we remember are St. Mary the Virgin, mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Jonathan Myrick Daniels, an Episcopal seminarian and witness for civil rights in our own country. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is of course a well-known figure. She is one of those biblical saints whose stories have inspired generations of Christians 
her response of faith, recorded by St. Luke, is perhaps best embodied in her words to the angel sent from God. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary's yes to God played a central part in the story of God's people, and it reverberates down through the centuries. Her feast day is on August 15th, and it's a prayer book holy day. New Hampshire's own Jonathan Daniels did not set out to be written up in lesser feasts and fasts. Most of you know that Jonathan was a member of St. James Episcopal Church in Keene, a beautiful church in downtown Keene. Jonathan felt called to the priesthood, so he had become a seminarian at the Eastern Theological School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Assuming that all went well, Jonathan could look forward to a long life as perhaps a parish priest. He would now be 83 years old, and I assume retired, having probably baptized, married, counseled, and buried a large number of parishioners. He would undoubtedly have celebrated the Holy Eucharist week after week, and no doubt have faithfully fulfilled the duties of his office. Who knows? He might even have been a bishop. He would have had plenty of opportunities to live out his faith. This very reason to think, there is very reason to think that his life would have been an inspiration to many. But fate would have it otherwise. In March 1965, Jonathan Daniels heard a televised appeal by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr asking for workers to come to Selma, Alabama to help in the work of securing the right to vote for all citizens. Jonathan's initial impulse to answer this call was strengthened during the, sing the singing at Eve song of the Magnificent, the beautiful song of Mary also found in Luke's Gospel. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things. I knew I must go to Selma, Jonathan wrote. The virgin song was to grow more and more dear to me in the weeks ahead. Here we see a living example of faithful witness, inspiring faithful witness, though the persons involved were separated in time by 2,000 years. Jonathan went to Selma, where he lived with black families, among whom he and others worked as they struggled to claim their right to vote. On August 14th, Jonathan and several others were jailed for participating in a picket line. Released unexpectedly six days later, the freed civil rights workers walked to a small store where they had previously shopped. 16-year-old Ruby Sales, a black teenager, was the first to reach the door of the store. As Ruby approached, she was met by a deputy sheriff armed with a shotgun, who cursed her. Jonathan pulled her aside to shield her from the 12-gauge shotgun and took a blast point-blank in the chest. He died on the spot. In his book, Brightest and Best, Sam Portero theorizes that the man who threatened Ruby that day in August had been taught to fear and hate those who differed from him. He had been taught to grant someone else, especially a black someone else, any entitlement is to, in some way, diminish his one's own share. Jonathan Daniels, on the other hand, nourished by Holy Scripture and the sacraments, encouraged by the example of that cloud of faithful witnesses, 
had learned faith, hope, and love. On the top step of that little store in Selma, Portero writes, fear met faith, greed met hope, hatred met love. The outcome could have been predicted. Faith is trusting in the promises of God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and turn to page 358 as we proclaim our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Please join me in the prayers of the people found on page 388 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. At the end of each prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your glory and honor. Lord, in your mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of the West Indies. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Christ Episcopal Church, Portsmouth. Bless all those, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for all members of our community who have been made to believe that they are not welcome in this church buildings, in this church and church buildings and communities 
especially those who have been excluded because of how their minds were created to function. We pray that we, the people who are the church, will share with all adults and children who are autistic or otherwise neurodiverse, that they are not only welcome here, but wanted here, just as they are, that we celebrate them as beloved children of God. Lord, in your mercy. Come forth and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Remembering today especially Anne, Chris, Claudia, Fran, Isla, Betty, Karen, Andrew, Nancy, Bill, Mary, Debbie, Randy, Hope, Michael, and Greg. Matthew. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to you, to your mercy, all who have died, remembering especially today the members of the Jerry and Walcott families, Frank and Marjorie Estes and Joseph and Alice St. Hilaire, St. Hilaire, in whose loving memory the altar flowers are given, and the victims of the flooding in Kentucky and of all natural disasters. We pray for that your will for them will be fulfilled and that we may pray that, that we pray that we may share with all your saints, saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. As you pray through our parish list, we lift the following people to you, giving thanks for each of them and asking your blessings on their lives. Betty Finan and Karen Clark, Alwyn Fine, William and Evelyn Firth, Alyssa and Corbin Flynn, Sherry Foote, Tom and Kathy Forrest, Jeff Forrester, Laura and Tyler Forrest, Fo Laura and Tyler Foster, Ray Fournier, Judy Fox, Jeff Trombley, and Lucy Arsenault. And in thanksgiving for the 61st wedding anniversary of Chet and Jen Jane Ann Fuller. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Our service continues on page 369 with Eucharistic Prayer C. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor and glory and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Some members of this congregation are joining us from afar and are thus unable to partake of the Holy Eucharist. I invite those of you who are joining us remotely to join me in prayer. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome at Christ's table. Continue on page 365, their post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Thank you. 